Hey guys, Redneck Mini 14 here, and man, has it been a long time since I've made a video on this channel. Um, really just haven't had a whole lot of free time, and whenever I did get free time, I just wanted to take a nap. So, <laughs> been uh, focusing a lot on my other channel and, and other hobbies and work and just all kinds of stuff. So anyway, um, I decided to finally bring you guys a review of my Rock Island Armory T-Pass shotgun. So that's T-P-A-S, and that stands for Trench Pump Action Shotgun. And I forget, let's clear this guy here. Nothing in there. I forget if Rock Island Armory actually makes this in the Philippines or if it's outsourced to Turkey. Yep, it's Turkey. Um, but you know, most of Rock Island Armory's guns are actually made in the Philippines. They're 1911s and uh, stuff like that. But their shotguns, they're made in Turkey, which is where a lot of shotguns are actually made. But anyway, um, they market this shotgun as being a replica or a reproduction of a Winchester 1897 Trent shotgun. And as you can see, it is not a reproduction of a Winchester 1897 Trent shotgun. This is actually a reproduction uh, or, or at least uh, a clone or whatever you want to call it of a, an Ithaca 37 Trench shotgun, which is nothing like a Winchester H97. So I don't really know where they get the whole 1897 thing, but it, it's totally different gun. Um, and if anybody's interested, I'll make a video on the differences because, I mean, it just is. It's a totally different gun. Um, but I do think they both come from John Browning in a way. Um, this one is a little more of a, a descendant of a John Browning gun, I think. At least I think he made that gun. Um, anyway, that, that's a topic for another video. But this is a clone of a, an Ithaca 37. And an Ithaca 37 is known for being a bottom eject shotgun. There is no ejection port on either side of the receiver. Everything gets done through the bottom. So you load it through the bottom, have no sort of uh, loading gate like on a, a Remington 870 or, or a Winchester uh, 1300, you know, anything like that. Um, so you load it from the bottom and it ejects from the bottom. So you have your, um, your action um, release right here. And you have these two little arms that come out the bottom when you when it pulls the the shell out of the chamber, it pulls it out, and then those two arms will shuck it out the bottom, and then the next round gets uh, you know ejected out of the tube, and the two arms will put it back into the chamber. So it's a pretty neat design, um, and it is definitely lefty friendly although it does still have a cross bolt safety which is obviously more righty friendly um so that's one thing they kind of missed the mark on um and by they i mean ithaca you know they missed the mark on getting a tang safety on there kind of like a mossberg although the mossberg 500 didn't even exist when this gun, or at least the Ithaca, uh, came out, or the gun that it comes from, which is the Remington Model 17. Um, so that's basically what an Ithaca 37 is, a uh, an evolutionary step from the Remington Model 17. But anyway, um, I forget how much I paid for this. It's been a while. I think I paid like $450 for it, maybe? Something like that. Um, and... It's, you know, for the price, it's a pretty good shotgun um, compared to a real Ithaca 37, which is uh, probably close to twice that. 
um, really, and depending on what model you get, I mean, if it's a defense gun, um, it's probably about twice that. If it's like a an upland bird gun, um, it's probably even more than that. Um, you know, these the Ithaca 37s, they range in the $1,000 range um, for a really good one, high quality one. Um, this one obviously is not, and you know, the grade of the wood is not as good as an actual Ithaca, but it's not bad. Um, I mean, for the price you pay, it, it's really not bad. It's got some nice character in it. I'm not sure what wood they use. Um, and the finish on the receiver, it's got a lot of dog hair on it. Uh, the finish on the receiver, it's called Black Shiny. At least that's what they say on Rock Island's website. It just says black shiny, so I don't know if that means like black nitride or, or something, but it's not blued, um, so it's not exactly the same as an Ithaca 37. Got your heat shield here, which is cool, I guess. I mean, that's a signature feature of a trench gun. They all had the, uh, the heat shield, or at least most of them had a heat shield on them. Um, has a blade front sight, which... I guess they do that so you don't lose the bead behind the heat shield. Um, it gives it more of a, a you know a higher profile for that front sight. So um, I don't know. It doesn't really matter to me. But typically, a shotgun just has a bead front sight, and it does kind of have some sort of a bead. I don't know how well the camera is going to pick it up because this camera does not focus very well. It does have some kind of a bead on the front for a little more high visibility, but um, you know it's it's just a shotgun really. So I mean, there's no rear sight or anything like that. It's just that front blade. So that's that's the sighting uh, sighting system that you have. It does have um, sling swivels on the front and back. So you can put a sling on there. And um, it is a five plus one capacity, which is typical for your um, imported shotguns. Pretty much all imported shotguns, whether they're pump action or semi-automatic tube fed, uh, or even magazine fed, they're all going to be like five rounds because for some reason they decided that six rounds is way too deadly for you know shotgun manufacturers to be importing into the country five rounds is okay but six rounds oh no no can't do that i don't know why it's just one of those stupid importation laws you can't import a shotgun that can hold more than five rounds or five plus one i guess um so that's just typical of any imported shotgun now that is different from the original Ithaca Model 37. The Ithaca 37 is a 4 plus 1 capacity, so the tube basically ends at the end of the pump. Unless it was a, um, unless it was a, uh, like a defense shotgun or a riot shotgun, something like that, where the tube would go to the end of the barrel, and it would be like a 7 round capacity. Um, I do have a real Ithaca 37. It is a feather, feather light, I think it's what they call it. And, um, you know, it's a hunting shotgun. So I'll do a comparison. It's not going to be an exact apples to apples. But it, as far as an if a real Ithaca shotgun, it would be a good comparison. It does have the same kind of corn cob forend and and uh, stock. Oh, and by the way, it does, I forgot to mention, have a corn cob forend, which is my personal favorite kind of forend on a pump action shotgun. Uh, that's why I really like the Mossberg 500s, because um, a lot of them do have a corn cob or ribbed style forend. You know, the Mossberg 500, 590, the Maverick 88. Most of them can have some sort of corn cob forend as an option, um, whether it be wood or synthetic. Um, so anyway, um, I would show you how to take it down, but the heat shield actually keeps you from taking it down. So I think, 
you just tighten this guy up and you're supposed to be able to you know, tighten that that foreign or the uh, the cap of the tube up and it releases it from the barrel essentially and you can rotate the barrel off the problem is that the uh, heat shield prevents it from rotating all the way so you actually have to remove the heat shield to do that and I've seen videos where people say that when they take the heat shield off it kind of uh, damages things so unless I absolutely have to take the barrel off to clean it um, I'm not planning on taking that heat shield off and probably if I take the heat shield off ever I'm probably just gonna keep it off um, it you know it does look cool this is my second shotgun that has a heat shield I mean it so it does look kind of cool but honestly I don't shoot it enough to really need to have a heat shield um, you know I just kind of take it to the range and shoot it every now and then uh, maybe put a box of shells through it so maybe like 25 shells through it um, it's not like I'm taking it into combat and firing hundreds of rounds through it and burning the flesh off of my hands or my my arms or my legs or whatever um, so I don't really need a heat shield it's really just for aesthetics um, because that's what trench guns had the only thing it doesn't have that a typical trench gun would have is a bayonet lug and that might be an importation thing as well I don't know if imported shotguns can have bayonet lugs or not but again that's some, not really something that I need um, because I don't really plan on using a bayonet on this shotgun anyway I'm sure you could find a way to weld one on or, or solder one on if you really wanted to but um, honestly I don't see a need to have a bayonet on this shotgun but there are plenty of real and even reproduction model trench shotguns out there of all the different brands the Winchesters and and uh, the actual Ithacas and I think there's even some like inland reproductions of the Ithacas that have the the bayonet lug so anyway um, there's not really a whole lot else to say about this I mean I do want to do a comparison between the two shotguns um, one thing to note is that it does have a metal trigger guard um, which a lot of shotguns these days don't have um, I mentioned before the cross bolt safety and the slide release the pump release at the front of the trigger guard which um, on, you know and it's more right-handed friendly compared to like a Remington 870 um, and that's probably another gun that I might compare with this shotgun too because the Remington 870 is kind of another evolutionary step of this gun because you know the the model 17 um, you know it's kind of was kind of like a, a big evolutionary step in a lot of newer shotgun designs um, obviously including the Ithaca and the Remington and I think maybe even the Mossberg 500 um, the the model 17 uh, kind of paved the way for those shotguns but um, I'm not really an expert in the model 17 um, but it is very similar shotgun as far as I know to the Ithaca so anyway that is the Rock Island Armory T-Pass or trench pump action shotgun and no it is not a reproduction of a Winchester 1897 it is a reproduction of a an Ithaca 37 so maybe one of these days somebody at Rock Island will look at this gun and look at the original trench gun and say huh those two guns actually are not the same Hey, before I go, I just thought I'd remind everybody that I do have a second channel called Redneck Off The Range. Over there, I post most of my non-gun related content, so whether it's a video on my new tractor, my power tools, my projects that I'm working on, maybe wild game recipes, or just a random vlog, I post all of this kind of content over on my secondary channel. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, go check it out, Redneck Off The Range. But that's all for this video, so subscribe to my channel, like me on Facebook, 
I'm Redneck Mini 14, and until next time, be safe.